Um, before I show you the next project, I want to show you um, kind of one of the interesting things about how uh, Python sees different types of variables. So remember before I said that we could have a number and it might equal six, and a second number, second number equals uh, seven. Notice I put an underline between these two words. That's how some people do variables. Other people like to do it like this, second number, capitalizing the first letter, or um, you could go number, you know, second number, I guess you could call it all one little lowercase. But you should be consistent in how you name your variables. So uh, I like to use the underscore method when I have uh, multiple words. So number and second number. Now, if I go ahead and print number plus second number, it's going to print 13 because it knows that each of these is actually a number. Okay, so if I do this, it's going to print 13. But if I change second number to the word, let's say, um, 6, and the second word, 7, it's not going to print what I think, it's not going to print 13, that's for sure. It's going to print 6, 7, because it just kind of shoved those two words together. Well, because they're in quotes, they're called strings, and that means that the computer doesn't know what they, they are. It doesn't necessarily think there's a value to them. It just thinks it's a word. So the same thing is true if I hit 6 in quotes and 7 in quotes. When I print here, it's going to print out 6, 7, because it thinks both of those are just words. So in the last video, we learned that um, we can input uh, numbers, or input anything, really. So um, number equals uh, input what is the first number, okay? And then second number is going to equal input what is the second number. And then I'm going to print number plus second number. So check this out. And you can program this too if you want. Okay, let's go ahead and run it. So what is the first number? First number is 4. Okay. What is the second number? 7. And it printed 47 because it didn't understand that these were actually numbers. Um, it thought of them as words. So in order for the computer to realize that these are numbers, you need to do something with that. So instead of just saying number equals input, then you have to change it into an integer. And the way you do that is you say int, which stands for integer, um, number. So I'm taking the variable number and I'm turning it into an integer. And I'm going to do that a second time too. Second number equals int uh, second number. So I've taken these words and I've turned them into integers and now I'm going to print it. Okay? And it's not going to be 4, 7. This is not going to print 4, 7. What is the first number? 4. What is the second number? 7. And now it prints 11 because it understands that both of those things are numbers. We're going to use that int idea to create a new program. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to change the variable number to age, and we're going to say, what is your age? And I'm going to convert that word into an integer. So age equals int age. Okay. Um, now I'm going to print something. Print, you just told me that you are um, age years old. Okay, let's see what this does. Run. What is your age? Uh, 49. You just told me that you are 49 years old. Yay! Okay, that worked pretty well. But that's not very interesting. Maybe we can make this program a little bit more interesting by making some if statements. If statements are conditional statements. They only happen if a condition is true. So if age is less than 5, and then you put a colon, because I'm going to do everything after the colon. Then print, you are very young. And now I'm going to go back, because I'm done with that if statement. And I'm going to say elif, which means else if. So it's only going to do this 
if age is uh, not less than five. L else if, that stands for else if, elif. Elif age is, um, so I know it's over five, is less than, uh, let's see, 12. Then print, you are a pre-teen. Brush your teeth. These are the kinds of pieces of advice you might give a preteen. You are very young. Take a nap. Okay. Um, L if age is less than um, uh, 20, print you are a teen. Uh, listen to your parents. They might be right. Okay. Um, L if age is less than 40, write print. Okay, so I'm going to say print. Uh, I hope you no longer live at home. Um, uh, you are a young adult. I hope you no longer live at home. You could argue that 40, well, it's based on my age, I guess. Okay, and uh, L if age is less than 60. So this means if I get to this line, it means that the person is over 40 and under 60. That's what the L if does, because I'm only going to get down here. This is else if, else if. So I'm only doing these things if these things are not true. Okay, so L if age is less than 60, so it's somebody 41 to 60, print, um, you are middle aged. Uh, listen to your children. Okay, so they might, oops, they might be right. Okay, and last means you're over 60, so L if age is less than uh, 100, you could say you are getting up there in age. Uh, listen to your body, because you know your body might have aches and pains at that point. And then L if age is, or just L, uh, else, because I don't need any more if statements. If you're over 100, I'm just going to say else, print, you are truly old. You don't have to listen to anybody. Okay, so let's go ahead and run our entire program. It shows you this idea of else statements, and um, it, it allows you to enter that, and enter your age, and then it does something with that statement. So let's go ahead and take a look. It says, what is your age? So I am 49. You just told me that you were 49 years old. You are, you are uh, middle-aged. Oops, I'm going to type it. You are middle-aged. Uh, listen to your children. They might be right. Okay, let's run it again. What is your age? 12. You just told me you were 12 years old. You are 18. Listen to your parents. They might be right. Okay. Um, and, oh, I guess this isn't quite right. It should be Ella, um, else if age is less than... Um, 13? Did I make a mistake? Wait, you are a teen. Why did it do that? You are a teen. Else, if age is less than 12. Oh, because I said it should be less than 13. That's the problem. Okay. Because you're not, you are a preteen, actually, when you're 12. So, um, let's try it again. I am 12. You just told me you were 12 years old. You are a preteen. Brush your teeth. Okay. So it has all this code, and it tells you what to do. And that's how you use um, if statements. Uh, and you can program all sorts of cool things with this. You know, one thing, though, that would be nice is, well, actually, no, I think we're fine right now. OK. Um, and uh, we're good. We can save it. Oh, how do you, I'm going to show you how to save things. So to save things, you're going to say, um, how do you do that? It says draft saved. Oh, uh, no, trinket name. Hmm. I have to figure that out. Hold on. Aha! You can't save things because you have to pay 
for Python 3 in order to save. Um, so what we're going to do is this is how you're going to save it. You are going to share it and you can email it to yourself. Um, so let's see. I'm pretty sure that'll work. So I'm going to email it to me. Um, what email address? I'm going to say rmaltzman at kenfieldschools.org and it's from Reed Maltzman and I'm going to send a copy. All right. So now if I go to my email, I will find that in there and um, I will be able to check out my uh, my own stuff and be able to save it. You can also share it with a lot of other people too. You could share it to um, you know, other people. You can get a link for it and that's a way of saving it too. Um, so here's the link. You could copy the link and then if you just put the link on any other page, it will open it right up. Okay, cool. Um, and that is really fun.